Concrete stenciling revealed. A children's park blooms with decorative concrete, getting the proper mix every time. And the Sawtech Grinder Vac Dolly. That's all coming up next on Concrete Network TV. Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Concrete Network TV. I'm Maureen Barley. When you think of dressing up concrete with a decorative surface resembling brick, stone, or tile, you might think stamped concrete. But did you know that you can achieve a very similar effects with stenciling and often with less time and effort? Disposable paper stencils are utilized to impart the pattern. They mask off the underlying surface and leave behind realistic looking mortar joints. A dry shake color hardener is applied to the exposed concrete before the stencil is removed. The result is the appearance of individual stones or bricks that have been mortared together. Stenciling can be done in either freshly placed concrete or an existing concrete that has been covered by an overlay. Just how is it done? Well, after crews place the concrete, they screed, float, and edge the slab as usual. Then uncoil and place the stencils on the surface and align. While the concrete is still wet, the stencil is plastered to the surface with a special stencil roller. Workers then use a pair of scissors to trim the stencil. Immediately after stencil application, the next step is to hand broadcast color hardener onto the surface. With stone or brick stencil patterns, a texture roller or seamless texture skins will give the surface a more realistic, slightly roughened profile. Next, a liquid or powdered release agent is applied to the surface. Finally, it's time to remove the stencils, and that's really when the effect comes to life. The day after the pour, crews can clean off the release agent, saw cut the control joints, and seal the slab surface. To learn all of the exciting details of stenciling concrete, visit ConcreteNetwork.com and search stencil. My Friend's Place, a boundless playground, is a park where everyone can laugh, play, learn, and grow together, regardless of ability. The park is designed to be completely wheelchair and handicap accessible. Benjamin McCarthy of McCarthy Concrete in South Windsor, Connecticut, performed the concrete work at no cost to the town. The jewel of the playground is the sensory garden, offering flowers and other interesting items all at wheelchair elevations that the kids can touch and smell. A centerpiece was needed for this area, and originally pavers or stamped concrete were considered, but McCarthy had a better idea. He created a flower. By making three different stencils for the petals and using colors from Schofield's lithochrome tintura stains, McCarthy's flower was met with rave reviews from the kids when the park opened back in July. Way to go, Ben! To read all of the details on how McCarthy Concrete created the My Friend's Place Park flower, visit ConcreteNetwork.com and search Park. Getting the proper mix you need for a given application can be a challenge. Requirements can vary from stamping and staining to overlay and topping mixes. Learning to adjust the mix to meet a specific situation is one of those things that comes with experience and probably a few mistakes. ConcreteNetwork.com has provided a detailed overview of decorative concrete mix design. On stain jobs, for example, you may or may not have any influence over the base concrete. If you do, a low shrinkage, durable slab mix is the primary goal. For stamping, aggregate size is important in controlling shrinkage, and the larger the aggregate, the better. You'll need some paste at the surface to get a clean, sharp stamp. With toppings, you can only hope that you're starting with a floor that will properly support the overlay. The biggest thing to watch out for from the substrate is moisture transmission. To learn how to adjust the mix to meet a specific situation and even more tips, click on the Find a Product tab, look at the top of the left column, click on Decorative Mix Design, and get the most out of your concrete. This episode's product focus is the Sawtech Grinder Vac Dolly from Blast Track. Featuring a wide stance for greater stability, the Grinder Vac Dolly handle positions allow use from either the left or right side, and the forward handle is located directly over the grinding head for precise control. Pneumatic shock absorbers 
keep the grinding head in contact with the surface, allowing it to travel smoothly over uneven surfaces. Plus, a quick tilt adjust position of the grinder allows it to reach low areas or dips near walls when edging. Most importantly, the Sawtech GrinderVac Dolly reduces fatigue associated with concrete grinding and improves productivity by getting the worker off his knees. To read more about BlastTrack Sawtech GrinderVac Plus, the Concrete Network's extensive online collection of articles and information about surface preparation products, go to ConcreteNetwork.com, click on the Find a Product tab, then click on the Concrete Product News in the sub tab. Well, that's all for now. Next time, tips for building and designing concrete showrooms and everything you ever wanted to know about concrete home building. For all of us here at ConcreteNetwork.com, I'm Maureen Barley. Thanks for watching.